We continue now at the top of Daf Ayin Tesom and Beis in Maseches Yevamis. This is Yevamis Daf Seventy Nine B. The Gemara continues. Be May Rebbe. It was in the days of Rebbe. Bikshu Lahatir Nesinim. They wanted to allow the Nesinim to marry into Kalal Yisrael. Amar Lahem Rebbe. Rebbe said to them, Chelkeinu Natir. We can undo our portion in the Nesinim, but Chelik Mizbeach Miyatir. Can we undo the portion of the Mizbeach? Rashi over here says, Chelkeinu Natir. The Yecholin Bezin Lahatir Ul Hefker. Chelkam Shal Yisrael. The Kaimul and Hefker Bezin Hefker. There's a Halacha Hefker Bezin Hefker means to say that Bezin is allowed to be mafkir, the portion that Klal Yisrael has in terms of their ownership, so to speak, of the Nesinim. But the Nesinim also worked for the Beis HaMikdash. We can't undo that. And the Gemara continues, Upligod Rabbi Chia Barabba, and this argues on Rabbi Chia Barabba, the Yom Rabbi Chia Barabba, Am Rabbi Yochanan, because Rabbi Chia Barabba says, in the name of Rabbi Yochanan, Chelek Eido Liola Maser, the Chelek of the Eido was always Aser, Chelek Mizbeach, but when it came to the Chelek of the Mizbeach, Bizman Shebeis HaMikdash Kayim, at the times that the Beis HaMikdash was Kayim Aser, then it's Aser. Ain Beis HaMikdash Kayim Shari, but when there's no Beis HaMikdash, it is permitted. Rashi over here explains, Upligod Rabbi Chia Haide Ko Amar, when Rebbe said, who's going to be able to undo the portion that the Mizbeach has? Now, even though there was no Mizbeach at the time of Rebbe, there was no Beis HaMikdash, he was still saying that the portion the Mizbeach has in the Nesinim is Osir. So, Pliga de Rabbi Chia, that argues on Rabbi Chia, because Rabbi Chia said, hey, like, Eid the portion that the community has in them, Liola, Maser, Adshiatiru, that's Usr forever until we undo it. That's possible to undo. And, but in the Beis HaMikdash, it's automatically undone that Chalik when there is no Beis HaMikdash. And the Gemara continues with the Mishnah. Amar Rabbi Yoshua, Rabbi Yoshua says, Shamati shahasaris cholets v'cholzin le'ishto. I heard that when it comes to a saris, that's a man who cannot have children, so he can do chalitza, and also we can do chalitza to his wife. Let's say he passes away, so the brothers can do chalitza with his wife. But then I also heard v'hasaris lo cholets. I heard that the saris, the saris does not do chalitza. V'lo cholzin le'ishto, and we don't do chalitza with his wife. V'yein li lefarish. I can't explain these contradictory statements. Rashi over here says, Vasaris lo cholitz dechsiv. What does it mean that the saris doesn't do chalitza? Because the pasuk says lo yimachas shemo mi yisrael. It says his name should not be erased from klal yisrael. Prat le saris sheshmo mochi. That that excludes a saris from this whole halacha of yibum because a saris his name's already erased because he can't have children. Ve'enli the farish. He says I can't explain any odea eza saris ben chalitza ve'eza potter. He says I don't know which kind of saris is able to do chalitza and which kind of saris is not able to do chalitza. And so the Mishnah continues. Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Akiva says, Ani Farish, I'm going to explain it. Suris Adam, if it comes to a Suris by man, Rashi over here says, Suris Adam means Shenistaris Lacha Shenolat. After he was born, so then some kind of injury happens and he becomes that he's not able to have children. So in that case, Cholitz Vecholzin Leishto. In that case, he can do Chalitza and we can do Chalitza with his wife. Mibnei Shahai Salo Shasa Kosher, because there was a time where he was Kosher. There was a time when he wasn't a Saris. He only became a Saris later on. However, Suris Chama, if he's a Suris Chama, as Rashi over here says, Rizchama mi me'e imo, meaning to say that he was a Saris from the time he was born already. So lo cholitz v'lo cholitz in lishto there, there's, he doesn't do chalitza, we don't do chalitza with his wife. Mem neisha lo hoi lo shas hakosher, because in that case, he did not have any time where he was kosher. And the Mishnah continues, Rabbi Eliezer, Omer Rabbi Eliezer says, Lo, no, it goes as follows. Ki elo sris chama cholitz v'cholitz in le'ishto. Really, the sris chama is the one that can do chalitza and we can do chalitza with his wife. Why? Mem neisha yesh lo refuah, because in that case there is some kind of refuah. But sris adam, but if something happens to him already after he's born, so lo cholitz v'lo cholitz in le'ishto, there he can't do chalitza, we can't do chalitza with his wife. Mem neisha ain lo refuah, because from that there is no way to heal. And the Mishnah continues, Hayyid Rabbi Yoshua ben Beseira. Rabbi Yoshua ben Beseira testified al Ben Megusas, on an individual named Ben Megusas, Shahoya bi Rushalayim, he was in Yerushalayim, Sris Adam, and he was a Sris Adam, Viyivmu Esishto, and they did Yibam with his wife. Lakayim divre Rabbi Akiva, and that fulfills the words of Rabbi Akiva, because again, Rabbi Akiva was the one that said that by a Sris Adam you can do Chalitza, and over here in this story we see that by the Sris Adam they did Yibam with his wife. And the Mishnah continues, Hasaris lo cholitz v'lo miyavim. When it comes to a saris, he doesn't do chalitz and he doesn't do yibum. V'chein islandess, and the same thing is true by an islandess, lo cholitzes v'lo mesiyavemes. She doesn't do chalitz, she doesn't do yibum. This is talking about either a man, the saris, or a woman who is underdeveloped. They haven't matured. They don't have those signs of maturity. 
And the Mishnah continues, Hasaris shechalat liyevemto, if Hasaris does chalitza with his sister-in-law, lo pasla, he does not pasla her from kahuna, normally a chalitza is psula to kahuna, but this is not a real chalitza, so she's not psula. Now, Boala, if he has relations with her, pasla, then he does pasla her for kahuna, mimnei shi bi'ilas nus, because that's actually a bi'ilas nus. Rashi over here says, lo pasla min akuna she'en chalitza, sin chalitza. Doesn't pasla her from kahuna if it's chalitza, because his chalitza is not chalitza. But bi'ilas nus, but if he has relations with her, that's already a bi'ilas because here, there is no mitzvah over here of Yibam, because again, the Saras doesn't have any Yibam, so if he has relations with her, that's really just a situation of Eishasach, that's a situation of Be'ilaz Nus, and that puzzles her to Kahuna. And then the Mishnah continues, V'chein Eilinus, the same thing is true by Eilinus, Shecholzu lo achin, let's say the, the brothers do chalitza with her, lo paslua, they don't pasla her, again, it's the same thing, the chalitza is nothing. Be'olua paslua, but if they have relations with her, that does pasla her. Mimnei shebi'ilasa bi'ilasnos, because again, having relations with her is considered a bi'ilasnos, and therefore she would be pasla l'kuhuna. And the Gemara says, Mechdi let us see, Shaminan l'Rebbe Akiva, we know that Rebbe Akiva holds, the Yomar that he says, Chai ve'lavin k'chai ve'krisus damu, if you have a situation of Chai ve'lavin, that is the equivalent of Chai ve'krisus. The Chai ve'krisus la'ab b'nei chalitza v'yibam ninu, in any situation of Chai ve'krisus, really should not be able to do chalitza and yibam. And Rashi over here explains, k'chai ve'krisus dami, dami Rebbe Akiva b'hacholitz, because Rebbe Akiva said earlier in hacholitz, yesh mamzer mechai ve'lavin, he said that even if there's a violation of a lav in terms of the relationship, the child from that relationship is a mamzer. Usris Adam, now a sris Adam, mechai ve'lavinu, that's a chiyuv lav. Dechsev lo yovo p'tzu adaka, that's a sris Adam, is basically somebody who is, has some kind of a wound, and therefore he can't have children. That's that's the same as the p'tzu adaka, that's a lav over here. So over here, if you have a sris Adam, really that should be a situation of a lav, which according to Rabbi Akiva is the equivalent of kares. So v'heichi kam Rabbi Akiva, sris Adam, cholitz is eish so how could Rabbi Akiva say that a sris Adam is able to do chalitza? Halo ram she doesn't even stand before him for Yibam or Chalitza because, again, this is a situation of Chai Lavin, which is equivalent of Kares, and there's no Yibam, there's no Chalitza by Chai Krisus. Via Broi Kaima, she should really be marrying someone from the outside. Ke Chai Krisus, like any other case of Kares. But Koy Allah, be Isereshasach, and therefore there really should be over here in Isereshasach. So it's a question on Rabbi Akiva's opinion in the Mishnah that Rabbi Akiva said, a Sris Adam is able to do Chalitza as part of the idea of Chalitza and Yibam. And the Gemara continues, Amr Rabbi Ami, Rabbi Ami says, and here the case is as follows. The case is that his brother actually married a Gioris. In other words, this person who's the Sris Adam, he's really trying to do Yibam with the wife of his brother, and that sister-in-law, that wife of his brother, is actually a Gioris. And a Gioris is actually allowed to marry a, a Petsua Daka. Because Rabbi Akiva, because Rabbi Akiva holds like Rabbi Yossi, the Omar Kahal Geirim Loik recall, because he says the community of converts is not considered Kahal, and the only prohibition is the Ptsu Adaka can't marry into the call, but he is allowed to marry a Gioris. And so therefore, in this particular case, the Sri Sodom is able to do Chalitza, and the Chalitza is a good Chalitza, because again, the woman is a Gioris. But the Gemara says, Yachi, if so, Yibume Nami Miyabim, why only Chalitza? They should even be allowed to do Yibum. And the Gemara says, Enochinami, no, that's actually indeed, that is correct. Really, they could do Yibum according to Rabbi Akiva. Vi'aidi Dama Rabbi Yoshua Cholitz. Now, since Rabbi Yoshua earlier in the Mishnah talked about doing Chalitza, Amar Ihunami Cholitz. So he also, Rabbi Akiva also says Chalitza, but really it could have been Yibum. And the Gemara says, Dekonami, we can even bring a proof to this from later in the Mishnah. The Katani, because the Mishnah said, Hey, Rabbi Yoshua ben Beser al ben Megusas, Shai Birushalayim, Sris Adam. Rabbi Yoshua ben Beser testified about ben Megusas that was a Sris Adam in Yerushalayim. The Yibmu was Ishto, and they did Yibum over there. It wasn't Chalitza. Lekayim, Divrei Rabbi Akiva, and that was the fulfillment of Rabbi Akiva's opinion. And so the Gemara says, Shema Amino, indeed you see from this that in, according to Rabbi Akiva by Sri Sodom, it's not just Chalitza, it is Yibam as well. And Rashi over here says, V'yaidi Dama Rabbi Yoshua Cholitz. So the Gemara said that since Rabbi Yoshua said they do Chalitza, so Rabbi Akiva also said Chalitza. As Rashi says, Rabbi Yoshua Yivume Lo. According to Rabbi Yoshua, Yibum would actually not be an option. The Islay Kal Geirim Mikri Kol, because he says that Geirim are considered part of the Kahal, and so therefore in such a situation it would be a problem even by a Gioris. Umiyu Michlatz Cholitz, and nevertheless Chalitza is done. The Chayve Lavin, Rabbi Yoshua Bnei Chalitza Ninu, because Chayve Lavin, according to Rabbi Yoshua, they can do Chalitza. Unlike Rabbi Akiva, who treats Chayve Lavin like Chayve Krisus, that is not true according to Rabbi Yoshua.
And the Gemara continues, Mesiv Rabba, Rabba asks the following question. The Brisa says, Pitsuadako Khrushchevcha, let's say you have a person who has crushed testicles, or a person whose aver is severed, Sris Adam Vahazake, and a person who again has an injury, not able to have children, or he's elderly, can't have children, or Cholzen Omiyavin, in all these cases, they can do Chalitza, or they can do Yibum. Ketzad Hauso, Mesu, let's say they die, meaning to say, let's say the Pitsuadaka dies, Vilohem Noshem, and they have wives, Vilohem Achim, they have brothers, Vyomdu Achim, and the Achim get up, Vyosu Maimra Vinishosein, and they do Maimer, that's the, the first step of Yibam with their wives, Vinas Nuget, or they give a get, or Shecholz, or do Chalitza, Masha also, also, whatever they did is in fact a valid act. Vim Balu, and if they have relations with them, Kanu, then they actually acquire them, the Yibam is going to be good. Mesu Achen, let's say the other way around, let's say the brothers die, V'amdu Hain, and then they get up, meaning to say the Sri Sodom or the Ptsuadaka, they get up, V'yasu Maimer bin Shosein, and they do a Maimer with their wives, V'nas Nuget, or Chalzu, or they give a get, or they do Chalitza, again, Masha Asu Asu, that it's considered a valid act, V'yambalu, Kanu, and if they have relations with them, they will acquire them. But the Brisa concludes, V'asr Lakaimun, but they cannot maintain the marriage, Mishum Shenemar, because the Pasuk says, Lo Yavu Ptsuadaka, Chroshavcha, Bekal Hashem. It says, Ptsuadaka, Chroshavcha, cannot enter the community of Hashem. So in this case, they can't maintain the marriage if we're talking here about a Ptsuadaka, Chroshavcha, etc. But in any case, what do you see from the Brisa? Alma, we see from the Brisa, Bekal Askinon, that we're talking about an individual. We're not talking about a Gioris over here. We're talking about something, someone who's part of the community. And that's why the Brisa ends, that because it says, Lo Yavu, that's why it's Asr Lakaiman. So therefore we can't give the answer that we gave above that the Mishnah in terms of Rabbi Akiva is talking about a Gioris. And we'll just note over here that Rashi points out lava zokin koi. When it says you can't maintain the marriage, that's not going on the person that's elderly. The elderly person can't have children, but it's perfectly permissible to maintain that marriage. That line is going on the cases of Ptsuadak and the other cases where the marriage is not allowed. And so in any case, the Gemara continues, Elohim Rabba, rather Rabba says, Kigon shenofla lo ulavasof niftza. What, what Rabbi Akiva is talking about is a case where first she falls to him to Yibam, and then he becomes injured. So in that case, there's certainly was a chi of Yibam at the beginning, and then he became injured, and so now you have a situation over here where you can't do the Yibam, but you still do the Chalitza. But the Gemara says, Amr le Abaya, Abaya said to him to Rabba, Velesi Iser Petsua, why doesn't the Iser Petsua come along? Vinidchi, I say the Yibam, and it should actually push off the assay of Yibam. As the Gemara says, Milo Tnan, did we not learn in the Mishnah? Rabbi Gamliel Lomer, Miano Miano, the case over here is, we're talking about a situation where a woman falls to Yibam to a man, but the man is married to to the woman's sister, but that sister is only a minor. So Rabbi Gamliel says, if that sister refuses the marriage so she can retroactively undo the whole marriage, so then she refuses it, and then it's fine to do the even because he's no longer married to that younger sister. Vim la'av, but if she does not do and if she does not refuse the marriage, so then what do you do? Tam tenachetag, that we wait until she becomes an adult. He's not allowed to have relations with that younger sister at all, and, and we wait until she becomes mature. Viteit say halazumi shumachosisha, and then at that point in time, so the other sister who was supposed to be doing the Yibam, she leaves the obligation of Yibam because she's now an Achosisha. Because now that marriage with the minor, now that that minor has turned into adult, that becomes a full marriage. And therefore, you don't have to do Yibam with the other woman because you can't marry two sisters. What do we see from that Mishnah? Alma, we see from that Mishnah, Osi Isra Achosisha comes along the Isra of Achosisha after the fact. There was already an obligation of Yibam in place, but now suddenly when Achosisha comes into effect because the sister has become an adult, so comes the Isra of Achosisha, Vidah and it pushes off Yibam. So Hachanami, so here also we should say the, th- the same thing. Nesi Isra Petsua. Now the person became a Petsuadaka, that Isra Petsuadaka should come along. Vinirchi, and it should push off the Yibam. So there shouldn't be Yibam at all again, and there shouldn't be Chalitza either. And so the Gemara says, El Amr of Yosef, rather of Yosef says, Hai Tana Hach Tana Dvei Rebbe Akiva. The Tana of our Mishnah, the Rebbe Akiva in our Mishnah, is the Tana Dvei Rebbe Akiva that says, the Amr that says, Mechaivei Lavin Desha'er Havei Mamzer. That it's only Chaivei Lavin that are lavin that have to do with relatives. In other words, if you have an iser lav that has to do with a karov, so that's considered a mamzer, that's at the same level as chayve krisus. But me chayve lavin geredi lo have a mamzer. But if you have over here only regular chayve lavin, like in this case, where the issue is pitsu adaka, that does not create a mamzer that's not at the level of kares. And so therefore, that's why over here there is a possibility of chalitza, even though it's a situation of pitsu adaka, and even though it's a situation of chayve lavin, according to Rabbi Akiva. And Rashi over here explains, of Yosef, rather of Yosef says, The case is he was injured first and then she felt him for Yibum. And your whole original question was that Rabbi Akiva treats Chayve Lavin like Chayve Krisus and there should be no 
yibum or chalitza here at all. Haytana de Masnis and Hachtana de Vei Akiva, who the town of our Mishnah is the town of Vei Akiva. Do Amar Bacholitz Liavem to Ezel Mamzer Kol She'er Baser Shehu Below Yavu. When we say Mamzer, it's only by She'er Baser. It's only where the Yisur has to do with relatives with a Karov. Udalok Rabbi Simoy, not like what Rabbi Simoy said. Do Amar Min Hakol Hayosar Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Simoy said that in all cases of Lavin, Rabbi Akiva would say it's a Mamzer Chutz Me Al Mordel Koin Gadol, with the exception of Al Mordel Koin Gadol. That was the other opinion within Rabbi Akiva was any time there's Chayve Lavin, even without Korva, even without a situation of a relative, the baby would be a Mamzer. But over here in our Mishnah, we're not holding like that. We hold that Ptsua Daka cannot create a Mamzer. It's not at the same level as the other Chayve Lavin of Korva that are treated like Chayve Krisis. And so the Gemara now continues with a general question. We said in the Mishnah, for example, let's say you have a Sris Adam. He became a Saurus later on in life. So one of the Shittas in the Mishnah was, he's still able to do Chalitza. But the Gemara asks, Ikri Khan Lohakim Lohachiv Shame. We should say over here that the Pasuk says the whole purpose of Yivam is to establish a name for his brother. When this guy at this point in time is a Saurus, he can't establish a name for his brother. He can't have any children. Why is there even a possibility of Yivam, meaning to say, why is there Chalitza in such a situation? Rashi over here says, and we ask, Why should a Saurus ever do Chalitza? Even if he had a time when he was kosher, we should say that at this point in time, he's not able to establish a name for his brother, and there should, of course, there should be no Chalitza. And so the Gemara says, Oh, my Rava, Rava says, Im Kain, if so, if you made that argument, Ein lo chishuk shek sheiru lo yavim. There would be no woman who would be kshayru to do yibam. Shalom nasa balas rizchamo shoachas kodam lemisaso. That her husband would not become a srizchamo one, one, one moment before his death. In other words, every woman that's married whose husband dies, at least at the moment before his death, he's going to be a sardis. He's not able to have children. And so therefore you should say there's no yibam ever because we don't care about the shasa kosher meikara. And of course that doesn't make any sense at all. As Rashi over here explains, Ravim Kane the Shasa Kosher de Mekar Lav Milsi. If you're gonna say the Shasa Kosher Mekar doesn't count, so hold of a Shas Misa Lochazi ain't Lachisha Vahulu. Since at the time that a person dies he can't have children, there's not gonna be any woman who's ever gonna have Yibam. Samach Lemisa, so Yisurim Misa, Matishim Kocho. By by the time he dies, so then you have Yisurim at the time of Misa, and that makes the person weaker. So Ella rather what must it be? Amrin and Holo Mekara Bar Hakama have a Chalitzi. We must say since originally the person could have children. That makes her bas chalitza. Hachanami lo shna. So here also it's no different. Let's say a person is a saris, he becomes a sris adam, so it's not going to be any different. He had a shas kosher, he's still shayach to do chalitza. It must be that that is the argument that we make. And the Gemara continues, L'Rabbi Eliezer, Peruka de Rava Pirchahi. According to Rabbi Eliezer, this answer of Rava is actually a question. And Rashi over here explains, L'Rabbi Eliezer, Peruka de Rava Pirchahi. According to Rabbi Eliezer, the answer of Rava is actually a question. Gemara Parach, this is a question from the Gemara. Kolomar means to say as follows. Hai Peruka de Rava, this answer of Rava over here, Pirchahi L'Rabbi Eliezer, is a question on Rabbi Eliezer in the Mishnah. Why? Da'avadei chazin and da'shas ha'kosher mil. Because Rav is correct. It must be if a person has a shasa kosher, that's substantial, that counts for something. So, so if that's true, now we have a question on Rabbi Eliezer. How could he say a Sris Adam does not do chalitza? Because apparently Rabbi Eliezer is saying the shasa kosher, the Sris Adam had a, originally doesn't help. But Havadai Srisa Shal Misa in Lo Rafua, certainly the Srisus of dying doesn't have any way to heal. Afilu Hachi Messiah Bemis Haisha, nevertheless a woman can have Yibam, Misham Shasa Kosha de Mekar, because of the Shasa Kosha that existed originally. And so therefore the sheet of Revelyezer, which says that a Sris Adam does not do Khalitza, is now difficult based on Rava's uh, based on Rava's argument. And so the Gemara continues that Rabbi Eliezer will respond, Hasam over there, it's not really a saurus over there. When a person is dying and he can't father children, that's just a weakness that's beginning with him. It's not an issue of saurus. Rashi over here says, says That's not called a saurus. What's happening is that death is making the person weaker. You can't compare that to a Sri Sodom. And that's why Rabbi Eliezer will make a distinction. He'll say a Sri Sodom who can't father children right now, he doesn't do chalitza, he's not to even in chalitza at all, but still a woman whose husband dies, that's not called saris over there. That's just the husband became weaker when he got older, or when he was dying, he became weaker, he couldn't have children, and therefore that's not called saris. Therefore that woman is still shayich to, uh, to chalitza.
and to Shaykh to Chalitza and to Yibam. And the Gemara continues, Hechi Dami Srischama. Now, what exactly is the case of a Srischama? Rashi says, You're saying a Srischama is somebody who never had a time when he was kosher. He was always as sorry as he couldn't have children. Amr of Yitzchak Bar Yosef, Rav Yitzchak Bar Yosef says, Amr of Yochanan, in the name of Rav Yochanan, call it would be any situation. And we'll continue with this discussion in the next video on Daf Pei Amr Aleph.